the days of King Henry II, priests accused of crimes were tried in special courts, which gave much lighter punishments. Whereas an ordinary man might be hanged for murder, a priest would get away with a short spell in prison. All sorts of rascals successfully claimed to be in holy orders and got off lightly at the special courts. King Henry and his great friend, the Chancellor, Thomas Becket, thought this was all wrong. Henry argued the matter over and over with the bishops, but could make no headway. Then one day in 1161, the Archbishop of Canterbury died. <sighs> Henry decided to appoint his own friend, Becket, as the new Archbishop. So Becket became Archbishop though he said he would rather not. Now, said Henry, you and I together can deal with the church courts. But to Henry's amazement, Becket refused. No. This led to a dreadful row. <coughs> they quarreled so bitterly that Becket decided to flee abroad. One day he escaped to France, where he stayed six years. Henry made many attempts to patch up the quarrel, but Becket refused to hear of it. Meanwhile, Henry had decided to have his young son crowned, so that there could be no dispute about who should be the next king when Henry died. But with the Archbishop of Canterbury in exile, who was to perform the ceremony? At last, Henry had an idea. The Archbishop of York could do it. So the coronation went ahead as planned. When Beckett heard about this, he was furious. <coughs> then he made a desperate plan to defeat Henry, even though it would be at the cost of his own life. Soon afterwards, Henry went over to France, and Beckett suddenly agreed to patch up the quarrel. This was so that he'd be allowed back to England. As soon as he got there, on December the 1st, 1170, he made a tremendous scene and excommunicated the Archbishop of York and all the other bishops who had helped at the coronation. News of this reached Henry the day after Christmas, and he flew into a violent rage. What? He cried. Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Four knights heard him, they were probably meant to, and decided to take action. They rushed to the coast, crossed the channel, and rode as hard as they could for Canterbury. When they got there, Becket was in his house next to the cathedral. The knights burst into the room and told Becket the king had ordered him to leave the country. But Becket refused. Cease your threats and still your bawling. I have not come back to flee again. He who wants me shall find me here. You have spoken in peril of your head, said the knights. And they withdrew to fetch their weapons. The monks begged Becket to flee or at least to take refuge in the cathedral but he refused. At last, the monks dragged him into the cathedral by force. The knights started to beat at the locked doors. Becket told the monks to let them in. Beckett, traitor to the king and the realm. Beckett did not answer. Where is the archbishop? Here am I, no traitor to the king, but a priest of God. Restore those you have excommunicated. I will not. Then you shall die. The knights drew their swords and advanced up the aisle. Beckett waited calmly in front of the altar. When the knights reached him, they paused for a moment and then struck him down. When Henry heard the news, he was filled with shame and remorse. As a penance, he let himself be whipped by all the monks of Canterbury.
The knights were excommunicated, and Becket was made a saint, which was what he'd wanted. And who was to blame for the whole sorry business? Henry? The knights? Or Becket? Or all of them? Well, which do you think?